I want you to celebrate yourself today. Not in a prideful way, but in a way that gives God the glory. We all know the two commandments that Jesus gave us whilst he was on the earth. Matthew 22, 36 through 39. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Today, we're going to look at the second commandment and look at the phrase that people typically forget. Jesus said, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You are supposed to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Unfortunately, a lot of Christians today don't love themselves. They are not happy with themselves and how they look. You cannot love others if you hate yourself. And this is an issue both male and female have to deal with. So today, I am here to remind you, you are made in the image of God. God is the King of creation. He is the creator of everything that exists. When we look all around us in nature, we will see the beauty of His hand in everything He created. The blueness of the ocean, the beautiful landscape, and the foothills of the steepest mountains, the skies and the planets, including the animals, the deserts of Africa, the mountains of Nepal, the lava baths of Iceland, God created it all, everything. However, as beautiful as this world is, as beautiful as the heavens are, none of these come close to the beauty and uniqueness God made you with. You are no accident. You are no mistake. You are not a random creation of evolution. You are the crowning glory of the creation of God. No one can walk like you do. When God made you, He threw away the mold. There has never been anyone like you and there never will be. Even if your children are the spitting image of you, they are still not you. You are one of a kind. God formed you in your mother's womb. Even if your mother didn't want to have you, God did. Even if your father didn't want to have you, God did. You are beautiful by design. You are beautiful by creation. You have value. You have worth. No one thinks the way you do. God made you so uniquely. You see the world differently than everyone else. You are gifted. Whether you are tall, short, big or small, God made you intentionally. The aesthetic and creative hand of God is visible and undeniable in the things He made and how beautiful they are. We can't deny any of them. They are here for us to see. He made them all bright and beautiful. In Genesis 1.26, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. The psalmist also knew this for a fact and couldn't hide his feelings. He knew from the depth of his heart that it could have only been God who could create humanity. In Psalm 134, 14, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that 
my soul knoweth right well. You are the express image of Christ. Do you ever feel insecure about your identity? Do you sense inferiority in the midst of others and, and always feel you won't even come close if you compete? God is saying it is a self-induced delusion. He created you in His own image and gave you a resemblance close to Himself. Regardless of what you think of yourself or believe, you are beautifully and wonderfully made. God designed you and made you exactly the way He wants you to be. You don't have to judge yourself through the lens of conventional and societal requirements of beauty. You are the image bearer of God and He made you just the way He wants you to be. On days when you feel less of yourself or like the odd one out, know that God made you in His real image. He didn't make you to look like animals or even angels, but like Himself. No matter who you are, where you were born, and regardless of the mistakes you have made, the bad decisions, the dumb decisions you have made, nothing changes the reality that you were made in the image of God. It doesn't matter how low you have gone. Every human being is made in the image of God and reflects God. What this means is that there is a divine significance about each and every person who walks on the face of the earth. You matter. You have value. Not because of what you have done, but simply because God breathed life into you. Know who you are in Christ. The first step to ascending your position as a child of God is to know who you are. Knowing who you are starts with accepting who God created you to be and loving every single work He put into making you come into being. A lot of people struggle with low self-esteem and secretly nurse the longing to be like others when they haven't taken the time to uncover themselves and find out the beauty that lies within. Society shouldn't define us or show us how we should feel about ourselves. The Word of God should. We have an identity in Christ that transcends the parameters of how the world chooses to look at us. We carry the image of the Father. We are His representatives here on earth. Why should we be ashamed of carrying that image around? You are God's elect. You are distinct and unique. Most of the time, we aspire to live like a certain set of people or a particular person, but we can't keep up. We would like to live their luxury lifestyle, but we can't afford it. We want to do the things they do, but we feel constrained by so many other factors. We compare ourselves so much that we forget how unique God has created us to be. We don't tap into our full potential if we don't focus on the distinctiveness of our personality. God did not make us to be inferior. We aren't created to walk in someone else's shadow. Psalm 139, 16 You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. You have an identity. It doesn't matter whether or not we are recognized in this world. Our greatest identity is in Christ and who He has called us to be. We are not here by accident or fate. We are here because He called us forth and ordained us to be here. We carry Christ's identity. Jeremiah 1.5 Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. The Imago Dei, God's image, is our identity. Imagine carrying the DNA of God and His presence everywhere you go, 
just because he's chosen you. The worldly requirements of sophistication or definition of beauty should be the least of our worries because we portray an even greater image. The image of God marks us out and sets us aside for excellence and good success. Not only this, it also reminds us that we are intricately connected to God and we have our inheritance in Him. There is an assurance that comes with the knowledge of this.